There are many people who want to just study English, but is it possible to learn a language outside of its culture? Let's talk about it. Welcome to Wagga Wagga Friends English. Studying a language is difficult. We all know that. And it's always a rush for time, it feels like. A lot of language learners, they want to try to figure out what are some things I can cut out. Like, I know I have to learn vocabulary. I know I have to learn grammar. Maybe I have to learn pronunciation. We have a pronunciation checklist in the description. But more importantly, do I have to learn the culture that comes with the language that I'm trying to study? It just adds another layer of difficulty, it seems. Yeah, it's a lot of work to try to learn all of that information. And where are you going to get that information? If you don't live there, then you're just trusting Google to just give you the right results or you trust that whoever's writing a blog article is not messing with you and trying to spread around things that they heard that may not be true. It's kind of like a game of telephone. So in short, no. no. No, you can't learn a language without learning the culture because language and culture are tied very closely together. And this connection is sometimes called in linguistics, the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis. And that sounds super complicated, but basically all it means is that language and the way people think are tied together. And so if you learn the language, it's almost impossible to not learn the way those people think because they're so integral to one another. If you're dating somebody and you really want to understand them, you've got to understand more of their background and the way they think and the way they talk, the things they enjoy. You've, the whole dating process is a whole period mm. of getting to know each other really well and to be able to communicate with one another. Absolutely. So when we started dating, we had to get to know each other, what we liked, but also even the words that we used. Her family used different jargon than my family family did. And part of getting to know one another was to get to know one another's family culture. Language can communicate some meaning, but most of meaning comes through the cultural context you are in. So you're going to use your words and they can mean one thing in this culture, but something else in a different culture. So a good example of this is the word for mooncake in Chinese. It's not a hard word in English. It's the same word in Chinese, moon and then cake. And if you do a little bit of digging, you might find that Chinese people give each other mooncakes during the mid-autumn festival. So you go to China during the mid-autumn festival, you have a friend, you want to share in the tradition, so you give them a cake in the shape of a crescent moon. The problem is, is that's not what a moon cake is exactly. And if you give that to that person, they may look at you kind of funny because that's not what they mean by the culture of giving mooncakes. They'll definitely get a kick out of it though. It would be pretty funny. Likewise, in American culture, we have a saying that we say all the time called riding shotgun. And if you are riding shotgun, that means you are sitting in the passenger seat beside the driver as they're driving. But it can be quite humorous if somebody's like, does that mean you have a shotgun? It's tied to our history. If you're on a wagon train, you had somebody driving the horses, took two hands, and then you had somebody with a shotgun in the front seat to take care of any problems along the way. <laughs> so <laughs> riding shotgun. <laughs> the idea is that one person is busy with the job of driving and the other person is able to defend the family as they go on their journey. So now when we use riding shotgun, all we mean is the person that's next to the driver. They're not in charge of defending the car. Maybe the only job they have is to make sure the music is going and make sure they can navigate to the areas that they Snacks need to for be. The kids. Yeah, that's that's the job of a person riding shotgun now. Very different from what it was before. Yes. <laughs> Idioms and certain words are always colored by the culture. You can't understand them outside of their culture. Either you're going to have a lot of difficulty understanding what somebody's saying, or you're going to come across very strangely trying to say the same thing without really knowing what it means or where it comes from. So much of language is exactly like this. The mm -hmm. words, the phrases, the idioms are tied to the culture that they're connected with. So when you guys learn English, it is impossible to just sever that from the culture and learn just dry English, even if you study a dictionary. So there you go. As you are studying English, make sure you look up and try to get into the culture. What does ballpark it mean, for example? Or what does coming in clutch mean? These phrases are difficult to learn at best and impossible to learn in the worst case scenarios. 
you can learn the meaning, but you wouldn't know how to use it and when to use it, what situations to use it, unless you have the culture. So it doesn't mean that you can't learn the culture from afar if you don't happen to be living in American culture now, but it definitely helps to be able to look it up and learn where these things come from. And that's why we highly encourage you guys to always ask why. And your native English speaking friends may not know why exactly, but you might be able to find a good answer by looking on the internet or asking a helpful, knowledgeable friend around you. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Bye.